Does premium economy class make sense? Or should I save the money and fly coach? Or just rob a bank and sit in the front? I know I'm not alone with this problem and that's why we have to solve it on one of the best airlines in the world. Now will that be nice? I've flown Cathay Pacific in first class, business and economy class and today we're going to Hong Kong in premium economy class from Tel Aviv in happy holiday mood just before the unexpected horror struck the region. Hello my dear ones, after reviewing quite a lot the first class and the business class of Cathay Pacific, today we are here on a special report about their premium economy class. In nine hours we're gonna fly from Tel Aviv to Hong Kong and check it all out. I'm not a big fan normally about premium economy class, I mostly choose either economy or business class, but I think at Cathay Pacific that might be not such a bad idea to do. Anyway, we're gonna check that out. Let's go together on Cathay Pacific premium economy class in nine hours from Tel Aviv to Hong Kong. So and here we are on the plane and just about to leave for the runway. Uh, upon boarding we got a welcome drink, there was a um, choice of orange juice, water or champagne. And this is already my second glass because they had also a second round of champagne and at first uh, I thought well, it could be a little fuller but there was just a coincidence. And uh, the second time is much more already and they already had like two or three sips. So, anyway, cheers uh, first of all on that. And then there's an economy class, no, premium economy class uh, amenity kit. So that's the amenity kit for premium economy class. And then, of course, we're gonna have a look at that later. Very clear. And then there's also the menu for premium economy class. Also that we're gonna check out really in detail a little later. Then there's a pillow on the seat and the blanket, of course. And I think it's quite, I, I could be the business class blanket, actually. It's quite nice and good quality. And then what else? There's a bottle of water and then there's a USB plug here and this is a coat hook and really very nice uh, footrests. They're very nicely padded so they're really comfortable. And then of course the seat reclines pretty much and also there's a nice uh, rest for your legs that goes comes up later during the flight. So that's all together quite nice and what they have is actually, or what they don't have is actually, they don't have a tray in front of you. So the tray is actually in the armrest and that gives you a lot of more space for your legs in the front and of course they don't use that space then so you can squeeze in uh, another row of seats but of course you get that as your own extra leg room because this is of course premium economy class and you pay a lot more than for economy class. And we're almost at the runway and I'm really, really curious now how this flight is going to be in premium economy class. I mean, um, of course, all my young life, younger life, and so I'm always been, I've always been flying in economy class. It's very logical. And um, the only thing that I always dealt with or had to deal with is actually that after like 10 or 12 hours flight, my legs and especially my feet were like five uh, shoe numbers bigger than before the flight so that uh, was always a big issue and um, that's why I always wear compression socks on flights like this not because I have real issues there but I just want to leave the uh, plane in the same shoes that I went on so I think that's a topic that's way too little talked about but it's a really important thing especially because there's also a risk of thrombosis on a plane and you should always think about methods and way to prevent that because nobody wants to have that of course on the flight. Anyway, I have a feeling this is going to be a good experience at least from the point of uh, the seat um, because we have as much as possible support for premium economy. Now, 
how did I book this flight and why from Tel Aviv? The flight would have cost an incredible 1,700 euros one way, almost 1,000 euros more than economy. I wanted to book with Miles, but in the entire month of August there was no award flight with Cathay Pacific from any airport in Europe. There was only one from Tel Aviv on one single day. Double advantage, like Sydney, Tel Aviv is located just under 5,000 miles from Hong Kong and therefore costs 30% miles less than from Europe. And I always wanted to visit Israel anyway. I had only three days there, but now they're even more memorable. And we've reached our cruising altitude. Well, um, as a start, I got some cocktail. Actually, it's a long drink, it's a gin and tonic. And I'm sure they have that in economy class too. And then I got some almonds. And now let's have a look at the beverage and food menu. On this flight for lunch, we have smoked turkey salad. And then as mains, we have a crispy cod in soy sauce. So that's an Asian uh, lunch dish. And then we have Arabic tangine with lamb. And we have a vegetarian dish that's beetroot and goat's cheese ravioli. And then we have some fruits and apple crumble as dessert. Then there's snacks throughout the flight. There's cup noodles, fruits and assorted snacks as snacks during the flight. And then for breakfast we have a fruit salad, fruit yogurt, bread of course. And then a choice of cheese omelette with grilled beefsteak or stir-fried rice vermicelli with uh, chicken and soy sauce so that's an um, Asian breakfast then for the drinks we have five kinds of spirits among them there's a 12 year old Chivas Regal and then the regular spirits you get some beer some uh, soft drinks and then three white wines and three red wines so that's not so bad I hope you've all seen my reports on Cathay Pacific Business and especially Cathay Pacific First Class We you get just an amazing, amazing food menu, a selection of food and also beverages of course. Uh, on my flight from Hong Kong to uh, Paris I had 11 dishes <laughs> on that uh, flight and it was just phenomenal. So it's really worth watching if you haven't seen that yet. But anyway, now let's have a um, look at this uh, lunch here, of course from the point of view of economy and premium economy but I'm really curious now I decided for fish uh, Asian style so that's fish crispy cod in soy sauce and it tastes really good it's not crispy at all but it cannot be because I mean I'm sure it was crispy in the kitchen <laughs> when they made it or when they prepared it but you cannot have it crispy when it's like in under aluminium foil for quite a long time and then reheated and so on it's impossible you cannot get it crispy but it used to be and uh, where the taste is good then there's also quite a lot of food actually it's quite big amounts of food and here's the salad there's lentil salad with smoked turkey, uh, turkey breast yeah but that tastes quite normal yeah but altogether, I mean, for premium economy, it's clearly a step down from business class. It's logical, but it's also a step up from what you would normally get in economy class, I think. So this is a nice dish, a lot of food. Good. Here's some great news. Travelsingfly is now finally a website too. After a long time of hesitation about whether I should take the step or not, the time has now come and the website is written in German, but it translates quite well into other languages with an online translation tool. You can expect reviews about airlines and hotels and trip reports from all around the world, as well as practical tips for your travels. There's also some topics that don't come up here on YouTube and some occasional guest contributions from travel professionals and travelers alike are also planned. I'm looking forward to seeing you there.
If you like this and the well over 100 flight and travel reports on the two Traversing Flight channels, then please give me a thumbs up, comment on the video and subscribe to the channel with the little bell next to it to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the exciting videos that are released here. You'll help the channel with all its free content to grow and become more visible. Keep looking around Traversing Fly, there's for sure a few more reports that are just the right ones for you. It's so great to have you here. So, um, lunch was quite nice. Uh, it was for sure quite a lot. Um, I mean, the dessert was not the dessert that was on the menu, but that can happen and uh, it's not going to be the end of the world. So, anyway, one thing that I really realize now is that there's really not much space once the, the person in front reclines fully, like does all the beautiful recline that the seat has then there's actually no more space between that recline, I mean be between the uh, backrest and um, the next seat. So if you want to get out, you are on a window seat, you want to get out, it's going to be quite a sportive event. And um, yeah, I mean actually it's less space than in economy class even, I would say. Of course for the rest not, you have a wide seat, you have a lot of uh, uh, leg room in the front, so that's for a premium economy quite good but to get out that's quite a thing so yeah a few inches more would be nice but not possible in premium economy I understand that too now the amenity kit Cathay Pacific Premium Economy Amenity Kit is a small cotton pouch with motives of various destinations of the airline. It includes socks, a decent sleep mask, earplugs and dental supplies. It's practical and a souvenir. So I just went on the neighboring seat just to show you a little better how the seat reclines. So this is the full recline and so it goes down quite much. But the actually really interesting thing is the part for the legs because that goes up quite a lot. And uh, actually it ends at the footrests and they're nicely padded. So that's also really quite um, comfortable. Of course it's very very far away from business class where you have a bad bed. But I mean like 20 years ago business class used to be like this and there was no bed in business class but anyway now this is premium economy and it's actually quite nice however I'm always already happy once I'm on board a plane no matter if it's economy class or first class of course first class is a big adventure and experience and here I'm just happy to be on a plane uh, but anyway I still am very happy when I fly economy or even low cost and also first class of course have a look at my Ryanair video then you know what I talk about um, I'm just happy to be on the plane see the see look down to the countryside and so, so that's really nice I've never felt entitled in my whole life no matter for what and um, how much is justified or not so um, I'm just happy I paid for premium economy I get premium economy and the nice way so that's great and another very practical thing is actually for myself right now in premium economy I cannot show so much so I will have a little time on this flight just for myself to watch a movie while at business class there's so much more to show and of course I show that that means I have to work almost all the flight and you don't want to see what's going on when I do a first class report because that's full-time reporting and full-time filming and talking so you get a nice report out of it and then at the same time I always try to not disturb anybody so I have to do takes again and again to make sure I said everything but I didn't disturb anybody as well so yeah anyway on this flight it's gonna be very relaxed not first class but just relaxed Cathay Pacific has one of the best entertainment systems of all airlines. It offers lots of movies and series from all over the world and all genres. And there's even an entire channel just for LGBTQ themed movies, something I've never seen on any airline. There's also a very large audio library and classical music is not neglected here either. The interactive flight show is well worth seeing and a good way to pass the time. There's also Wi-Fi on board for a fee, but I prefer to enjoy the luxury of being out of reach for some hours. Now what does the lavatory actually look like here?
good morning again or should I say good just before midnight because actually in Tel Aviv it's not even midnight but we are having breakfast now because in China it's already the early morning well um, the night I will tell you about the night in a moment um, I got uh, some cheese omelet and steak along with fruit and fruit yogurt and a very 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 sad version of croissant I always find it's better to serve a very honest piece of bread roll or just two slices of bread that would be so easy instead of serving this because this looks like it never had a good moment in its whole life this croissant and it will never have one so the other choice would have been rice noodles sorry i'm a little upset about seeing these things uh, the other version would be rice noodles uh, with chicken and soy sauce so that would be an asian breakfast and then we have some fruits and fruit yogurt and uh, coffee will come also there's orange juice juices and so on and um, then about the night I have a little mixed feelings now, not just, I mean, of course, it, this is not business class, we all know that, so I'm not coming from that uh, point of view, but um, um, there's a little buffet in the middle of economy cabin, and you can, I mean, buffet, there's a couple of drinks standing there, you can serve soft yourself with soft drinks and juices, and there's some little snacks, so that's quite cute. However, um, that's for the whole cabin. I mean, that's premium economy and, com uh, and economy together. But there were no flight attendants actually coming through the cabin. So either you go there or you ring them or you just don't get anything. So that's the choice you have. I didn't want to ring them because I thought they have enough to do. So I went down there to get to serve myself some juices. But then eventually I just wanted to have a classic on board of plane. That's Bailey's. And um, I didn't see any of the flight attendants, so I rang and I rang again and then I rang again, but then I also rang again. And then after six times, I just stopped ringing because nobody came even after half an hour and I went back. And then I found some people of the staff and I asked for some babies and I asked if that's normal that nobody comes in economy class, if that's um, policy and they I think first they didn't understand what I mean but then they said no no we would come maybe it's it's something is broken so maybe that's the case maybe it's not and I got my bailies anyway but I just think that staff should pass through the galley a couple of times within six hours that would be I think important and um, well other than that we have to see now I'm just gonna try my omelette now before I start my very very poor day in Hong Kong and uh, of course we have to talk about the whole flight later so talk to you in a moment so breakfast was actually quite nice when it comes to the omelette and the steak because there was some nice little creamy goat cheese inside the omelette and the steak was really, I mean it was small but really good. However, uh, this croissant was really horrible actually and nobody came maybe with some bread rolls or so but normally always happens. They would come with bread or so and ask if you would like something more. That did not happen either and then they came with coffee once. That was it. I mean, there's also was also some turbulences, but not really heavy ones. So that would normally not be the reason to not serve anything anymore. And that was also the thinnest coffee of my life, I think. And I spent a lot of time in my life in uh, the United States. So where there's actually <laughs> the thinnest coffee of the world. So that's not so fantastic. And uh, also what I don't understand is why they started serving breakfast two and a half hours before um, our arrival and then nobody's coming here anymore an hour and 45 minutes before arrival and still the cabin is like uh, not dark anymore so nobody had the chance actually to get that extra hour sleep I really actually thought I could sleep a little but then they served breakfast and of course after breakfast you don't sleep anymore so that is really not very practical I, there's no excuse that there was a little bit of turbulence because it was not heavy. They could have uh, done the service actually in that time. So that's a little unfortunate and it was really a downturn for the whole 
uh, flight experience. I see also in business class they have a different kind of lighting atmosphere. Here they just switched on the light and it was uh, bright at breakfast and nobody could sleep anymore or rest because it was so strong. And in uh, business class they have a different lighting system. That's nice. <laughs> so, um, but it cannot be that the light cannot be nicely here as it is in the in the front cabin. I don't understand it. So that should not be happening. Now I could stay upset or just think about something nice. Extra gifted me one of their smart wallets a short while ago and it has been my shopping and travel partner ever since. The finishings range from carbon fiber to aluminum to 18 karat gold plating, but most importantly, it protects your cards from data theft, it holds banknotes and there's a GPS tracker too. Fans of TravelSyncFly can get this smart wallet and other attractive travel accessories from Extra with a nice discount via the link in the video description with code FLY. Enjoy shopping! It's dark outside, but we are landing in Hong Kong in a few moments. So how was this flight in Cafe Pacific's premium economy class here on this Boeing 777? First of all, there's some good and some not so great things. The good thing is clearly the seat. The seat is comfortable, it's up to date for premium economy class. So it's wide enough and you have eight seats here per row um, compared to 10 seats per row in economy class. So of course there's much more space and also the the footrests are really comfortable, so that's all good. Um, then there's a very good headset, and I mean, entertainment is anyway very good at Cathay Pacific, so that's great too. The amenity kit is also a good or average amenity kit for premium economy class. The menu is a little elevated from economy class. Many um, drinks and also dishes are the same as in economy class, and then you get some main dishes. Actually, the main dishes a little better. However, they were not much better than what you would get in economy class on a good airline, so that was not so impressive. What was not so fantastic was actually, and that's the big surprise, the service. <laughs> Cathay Pacific is actually known for good service and um, that was not so much the case here. I think they were just overwhelmed by the task of serving uh, economy class and premium economy class uh, with just the same staff. They are very polite, very attentive once they know you really exist and they did not really know that until I went there and just grabbed my stuff. So, and the other thing is, it was very unfortunate to serve breakfast two hours and 45 minutes before landing. It really killed my night, it really killed my sleep, or my uh, opportunity to get some sleep, because they just served breakfast when there was not the time for it. So that was really unfortunate, and it was, was something, if I had known before, I would not have booked the more expensive seat. So, altogether, I also have to say, if I pay 100, 200, or maybe 250 euros more, I would buy this seat again, but not a thousand euros more, because this seat was really expensive. When I looked, it was a thousand seven hundred uh, one way from Tel Aviv to Hong Kong, and that was really, really too much for what you get. So I'm leaving this uh, flight with mixed feelings. Uh, Cathay Pacific is a great airline, however it was not a perfect experience for premium economy class. So my dear ones, this was the report about Cafe Pacific Premium Economy Class. I hope it was really useful for you. If yes, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, that's always for free and you're not gonna miss the reports that are coming up here on the channel all the time about airlines, hotels and destinations worldwide. And a report that you would really not miss is this one, just over here. See you again very soon here at Travel Sing Fly.